you deploy to answer to that, but what can happen next? What it can escalate? This secondary emergency can be the problem. You see the water, <coughs> but not necessarily the water of the blood, is what you will have to take care of for the civil population. <coughs> so I make now two practical examples that has implication for all of you. First, there are interruptions, so an, a trigger can trigger something else, but there can be also an escalation related to, for example, chemical supply <laughs> or infrastructure that can be get polluted. Take, uh, think about the, the triple event in Japan, the big earthquake. It caused a tsunami that smashed the infrastructure, so there were problems in deployment physically. But then what happened next? Uh, there was the Fukushima meltdown. So there was not one emergency, there were three different levels of emergency and three different disasters the local services had to answer to. And for the first time, Japan they was completely resilient. resilient. They had the capacity to <coughs> answer everything. They are taking as a model everywhere for preparedness. They had to ask for international relief. And I will show you that later what it shows. Another example was the 2010 Ash Cloud. <coughs> Some of you may have been stranded, so grounded on that. There was the Ash that got over Europe and everybody was... We had a student stranded in Hong Kong. But was it the Ash or <coughs> <coughs> so, that was the Ashcraft, you know, the, the great. These are international flights. So, the Ash <coughs> is parked here in the center of interdependencies. So, the global chain of supply there has no. But think about that. Which are the difference? You see? Again, this is shipping. There, there are many interdependencies. So, if it was something else in the same area, the global chain of supply could have been packed too. If you take the international cable communication, the internet, you will see that the map basically takes the same. It's centered here and here. So, there are interdependencies that if something goes there, because of Russian submarines taking up a cable there, you have consequences in North here and globally, or something like that. So everything is interconnected. And the way we prepare and we respond to disasters is changing completely. And we will be more in the future. In other words, that's what's happening. We are still focusing on the ball like the cat, the flood, the primary trigger, okay? But something else came up that can change completely the way we start with the service, and we can get stuck in that. So we are deploying from the primary event, but maybe the big problem is the other one. We can be aware of that, but if we don't consider it in planning, in our strategy, we can get stuck. <laughs> In other words, this is a study we published comparing first case studies. Try trigger event. The disruption of the infrastructure can escalate the problem, create a cascade with a direct effect, serving lots of vital services for which you have to deploy, for example, for a lack of energy because a power plant was, get, was down. And in direct effect, you have new, new hazards to take care of. Like in case of Fukushima, nuclear power plants, where the international relief have to provide contamination gators, dosiometers, and train. <coughs> so, deployment can change completely. The needs can change completely. And whatever you put on field can change completely. 
two examples that I made even yesterday. Uh, York and Parma. York is in the UK, a small town. Parma is my own town in Italy. There was a first flood in York. They are very good in dealing with floods. But what happened? There was an ATM center that went down. And then we see that this happened. This is the timeline of the event. And here are the consequences. So people that were not affected by the flood needed food. Because in the UK, everybody is paying with the, without cash. And, you know, you, you cannot buy food because the atom is done. So emergency services, instead of just working on the planet, <coughs> at one point, had to provide food for people that were not in the flooding area. <coughs> Another example. My hometown had a flooding. Big event, nobody died, but they are not used to that. They evacuated an hospital in Zara. But then, uh, there was a telephone hub nobody remembered. And 3 million people in the area were affected by loss of telephones. Including my parents, that live on the hills, uh, approximately half an hour car, from the center of the event. So, no water, they were perfectly well, 300 meters high, but they were without mobile. And the impact of that was people like my sister going to knock on the door, hey, are you okay? And at the local level, where GPs, medicals, physicians, they couldn't talk with their patients because they had no communication. So, how we are including that in, in plans? How are we including that in strategies? Cascading events are complex. We cannot focus just on triggers, on the punch. We have to do impact analysis, impact trees, and adapt scenarios. <clears throat> Preparing in a different way. Start to think about what is going to escalate which are the vulnerabilities that we bring this escalation up? Doing exercises, tabletop and drills, adapt policies and talk. Critical infrastructure providers often don't talk among each other. Services, I don't know here in the UK, often in the same department, you don't actually talk with each other. Academia, often don't talk with people that you are there supposed to serve too, and vice versa. <coughs> you know that kind of situation? Is it familiar? <laughs> we have to go off of that. Uh, this is a paper we published this year. <coughs> we put, to, we make a test. If we were saying just, you know, try there. We put, we started to think. Okay, if you think about common vulnerability that can escalate, let's put cybersecurity that is man-made, together with extreme space weather events, geomagnetic storms caused by the sun. What they have in common? <coughs> Maybe nothing. And no, they have something in common. They can both start satellites. Satellites is an infrastructure. They can cause both the loss of GNS, GPS. And this implies that when you deploy, the consequences are the same. And what if you have to deploy when something else goes wrong? You are unlucky. History is full of unlucky situations. Right? Think about climate change scenario, whatever. Deployment can actually get stuck in a situation like that, the same. So we have to prepare to that in a similar way that can be also useful for things that we are not preventing yet. You know, they are known that we cannot. And do you think this is like crime war? I make you an example that is not crime war. Right? This won't happen to us. There are coincidences, and low probability does not mean that this won't happen tomorrow. Means low frequency. Everybody <coughs> you have seen in your life a uh, two or three worst case scenario that nobody was thinking it would happen. The 2010 ash cloud was not in the UK risk register 
because they were not with canals in the UK. They were aware of the air transportation problem, but you know, with canals not in the UK. Uh, Marcus, look, can go worse. A friend of mine burned the barbecue and broke it. Okay? And think about our failures, practically. We have the habit to think that we are highly reliable, that our system will work, and we often don't see what happens. Power failure are super common, and we can actually see that, well, they can go down for a flood, but it was a cyber attack in Ukraine in 2015, where these people were without electricity. Uh, think about your Hurricane Sandy. No, uh, that in Europe, yeah. And in Italy, uh, the example that she read yesterday, uh, 150,000 families were without electricity because there were a snowstorm. Uh, but the problem was not that, it was that people were not trained to deal with that then. So the, one of the key problems was that during the deployment, not having the training to do that, the, the military was there for one week, not knowing exactly how to deal with the situation. It was not their job, they were not trained for that. They could empty the road, but who do you prioritize in a situation like that? Who are the vulnerable people you have to go hand down? And this is like, yeah. uh, I was referring to Jorge Marino, I'm sorry. But anyway, this is another worst case scenario. Puerto Rico, the massive blackout, but what is interesting in that? You know what happened when it was the deployment? There was one hour or two where communication was a bit worse because there was a geomagnetic storm in the same side of the, of the planet. The strongest one in the last 10 years. So what they showed about concurrency of events is not necessarily what happened tomorrow. But the way we prepare is different. So, at the practical level, what we can do? Uh, what we did, unless we are trying to do with the London Authority, first, uh, we investigated the risk perception in London. And we showed that the interdependencies of infrastructure, lots of services, they're perceived as very important, but they're not integrated in policy and practice. So you can actually understand which is your point. You can do something like that in your case. And then, yeah, there, this is not just theory, we have to do something. How you support training and situational awareness? Well, you can actually do scenario exercise, but we can also do together using the skills of academia and the practical input you can give us, some practical checklists like the one that were there, to do business continuity and emergency planning in a better way. And then we can do together gap analysis, for example. Not just modeling, but integrating modeling like critical infrastructure interdependencies to also <coughs> understanding which is the preparedness level at the local level. In your organization, are you doing it in the right way? What is missing? What is not considering the drill? What is not considering in the business continuity plan? Uh, one of the results of the collaboration we had is that it's something quite basic for somebody in academia. We put together an overview of which could be the cascading effects of wide hour of our failure, so blackout. We simply listed in a way that was the one chosen by our stakeholder. So, what could be a direct threat to life, even if it's not considered, like for hospitals, water issues, uh, or even just sit in London, there are a lot of highways. Citizen trapped in lifter is a big deal in London. Firefighters have to make one massive deployment to help people that for a for one hour blackout are stuck in lifters. And then the other cascading effect on society that can go up to, let's see, a recession, but also the challenges for your capacity, the capacity of first responders that are often the first victim of cascading disasters. Because, you know, you have the generator, but 
you will maybe have the person in Alaska in the UK that was supposed to activate the generator that is commuting and is stuck at home. So with, in this document there is there are a series of chapters of possible questions to include in business continuity and drills. Are you considering everything? Which are the vulnerable category that you have to include in your plan? Or are you sure to assess which are the lifelines for keeping the organization running? We often assume that emergency managers and organizations that deal with emergency are resilient or are simply able to maintain operation. But in situation of budget cut, limit resources that is happening, I'm not sure here, maybe you are full of resources all the time. In Europe and in the USA, UK, they're cutting. So we have to optimize services, do things better, and understand which are the common vulnerabilities to, that we can go through. And maybe sometimes it's just small steps like defining the plan B in case of communication disruption. For coming, we will release soon something on G and S failure where we are listing again the cascading effects. I will be happy to share it with you as soon as it's ready. It's done with the government. We had the last workshop last week. And in conclusion, whatever we do in research must be contextualized in what we are doing. Everything is dependent by the organizational reality you are working on. What could be different, for example, in the case we analyzed in the UK here? <coughs> what is sure is that cascading, these secondary emergency escalate are complex. Not all liars go together. And it's hard to understand them. I have a headache every time to, I go looking at that. So, it's a collaborative field. In our case, and in case I call a colleague here, we are all trying to do better, so there is a long way ahead though. And the only way to do that is together and collaborate. Uh, there were some guidelines on cascading effects of power failure, but you will find it also online on Prevention Web, for example. Happy to share everything. And if you have any questions, Please do get in touch in every time. If you want the material we're producing, we will probably release something else soon. Please do get in touch. Please check everything. And feedbacks are welcome. And if you have idea for cooperating, they are more than welcome. So I think uh, if you have questions, please just drop, drop me an email or uh, run me around later. Thank you. Thank you.